On Saturday, Discovery's crew will launch another communication satellite, this one leased by the Navy. But the real uncertainty in the mission comes Monday and Wednesday, and NASA considers the salvage operation crucial to holding on to its customers. Discovery is to be maneuvered into the orbit of each satellite, and then two astronauts will walk in space to hook the satellites to the shuttle's robot arm for retrieval. They intend to capture and bring home for repairs. That means that at least one of the two satellites that they are preparing to launch from the shuttle has to be deployed. This will pave the way for all that's to come over the next several days. The retrieval of the two satellites isn't simply a technical goal or something that NASA wants to do just because it's a challenge. Insurance companies had to pay out $180 million when the two satellites wound up in useless orbits last February, and that threatened the financial stability of the whole satellite launching business. Those insurance companies now... And take both of them back to Earth for repairs. School teachers who would like to ride on any future space shuttle missions will soon be getting applications from NASA. The space agency is advising potential astro teachers they'll have to be healthy enough for space travel, also eloquent enough to go on speaking tours once they return. And the... This is a communication satellite owned by Canada. Okay. Canada is paying NASA $9.5 million to put that uh, satellite into orbit. And actually, the satellite will not be used for two years, but uh, Canada figured that the launch rate, uh, the price for launching satellites is going to double in the next two years, so they're going to park it up there and just store it. Now you're looking inside the uh, main flight uh, deck, the cabin. And that's Anna Fisher at the uh, left side. Apparently, we can't pick up any of the... Uh, air-to-ground communications at this point. Charles, is this the one that's going to be spun out Frisbee style or...? No, this one will be launched in the more conventional uh, manner of spinning it up at, to about uh, 30 RPM and uh, then it uh, slowly lifts out of the cargo bay and then about 45 minutes later, the, uh, a solid rocket, uh, what's called the perigee kick motor, will fire a self-contained rocket motor on the uh, communication satellite. Now you look at the other crew members. There's five crew members aboard uh, the shuttle Discovery this time. Uh, Commander Fred Hauck, Pilot David Walker, Joseph Allen, Mission Specialist, Dale Gardner is a Mission Specialist. Those are the two who will be doing the uh, spacewalk on Monday as they try to recover the first of the two errant satellites. Those two satellites were launched back in February. They're reading off the checklist uh, in preparation for deployment of that first communication satellite, the Canadian satellite, which will be deployed just a few minutes after 4 o'clock Eastern Time. Uh, unfortunately, with, they'll be on the dark side of the Earth, so we will not be able to see that deployment. And as it's scheduled now, they won't uh, send back the videotape of that until tomorrow. It's, it is possible we could see pictures of that deployment uh, Ron, earlier we'll than let that, this run for two more minutes unless your back room's satisfied with it already. Charles, will we see a video of the spacewalk? Yes, we will. That's, that will be, that ought to be very dramatic because you will have two astronauts out in the uh, cargo bay and uh, the first retrieval attempt will be uh, Joe Allen will don the uh, man maneuvering unit, that uh, jet pack, and fly about 35 okay, feet work. away from the uh, shuttle to where they'll have rendezvoused with Palapa, the first of the co two communication satellites to be retrieved. He use a stinger type affair, uh, a probe, long six foot probe to uh, actually attach to the uh, bottom portion of the satellite's rocket engine, its spent rocket engine, and then Anna Fisher will use the 50-foot uh, robot arm on the shuttle to grasp both the uh, a, a grapple point on the communication satellite to bring both the satellite and the astronaut uh, still attached to it back into the cargo bay. And then uh, Gardner will, his job is to uh, secure the satellite in the cargo bay. They have a, and we've lost our picture, the uh, shuttle, is, we were getting those pictures more on this morning's success and what's ahead for discovery. Good morning, Charles. Good morning, and, Steve. Uh, what do we got here? Well, and then there was none. That was the good news for ground controllers from the five-member crew aboard Discovery following a successful deployment of the second communication satellite carried in the shuttle's 60-foot cargo bay. LeSat-1 is the second leased by the Navy. It will be used as a global communications link. It was spun out of the payload bay, a Canadian-owned communications satellite that is now on its way to a stationary orbit 22,300 miles above the equator. 
With the cargo bay now emptied, already has orders for launching 29 satellites. Coincidentally, the space shuttle crew Friday deployed a Canadian satellite at a cost of $10 million to the Telesat company. It cost GTE $25 million to launch its site from Ariane. But GTE officials say when they first talked with NASA in 1981, they were told the shuttle was booked till 1986. Besides, according to GTE, launching from Ariane gets their satellite into an orbit that extends its lifespan by one year over the orbit it could have achieved using the shuttle. But if you have a satellite that needs to be repaired in space or brought back to Earth, NASA remains the only game in town. John Zarella, CNN. The heaviest fighting in nearly five member crew aboard Discovery following a successful deployment of the second communication satellite carried in the shuttle's 60-foot cargo bay. The sitcom is a, uh, a fun one to watch from the uh, cabin here because it goes down towards the Earth and you see, as you can see here, uh, really fantastic views not only of the satellite but of the Earth uh, passing below us. LeSat-1 is the second Frisbee-style launched satellite custom made for deployment from the space shuttle. It is leased by the Navy and will be used as a global communications link among ships, planes, and ground stations. Less than 12 hours earlier, Anik D was spun out of the payload bay, a Canadian-owned communication satellite that is now on its way to a stationary orbit 22,300 miles above the equator. With the cargo bay emptied, the five-member crew is now concentrating on Monday's rendezvous with two wayward satellites that failed to achieve proper orbit last February. The so-called Stinger, now secured in the cargo bay, will be used by Poor Roo in French Guiana Friday night, its engines burning a hole in the night sky. It's such a beautiful night, we are going to see it for a long time. That's yeah. right. At, uh, on a clear night, you can see forever down here. Its payload, two communication satellites nestled in the nose of the rocket. Within 17 minutes of the launch, the first satellite, SpaceNet-2, was deployed. Three minutes later, the Marex B-2 satellite was released. The SpaceNet satellite is owned by GTE and will primarily be used for the company's long-distance Sprint telephone service. It is the second of three SpaceNet satellites that GTE plans to put in orbit. The Marex satellite will be used for maritime communications between ships at sea and shore stations. Ariane Space is the first commercial space transport company made up of 36 European aerospace and electronics industries. Their promise is to deliver satellites into orbit at a much cheaper price than America's space shuttle. Ariane Space already has orders for launching 29 satellites. Coincidentally, working is by this little status light, which when we initially powered it on, gave us a dot, dot, dot signal to indicate it was going through its self-test. And it's now flashing a dash dot dot pattern, which uh, indicates that the experiment is running and that the heater is on, and so far has been operating just as it was supposed to. The 3M company hopes to grow very large crystals that they will be looking uh, at in the post-flight period and studying it by a, period, uh, by a process known as X-ray diffraction. They are also interested in the optical properties. I'm narrating it for you. Um, Dale has, has been appointed assistant chief scientist to help Dr. Allen, who was once upon a time, we're told, a physicist, and has now regressed far enough back that it looks as though he's, he's gone uh, all the way back to elementary school. But he has been showing us globular physics. Uh, this happens to be a globule of orange juice. Well, it looks like we miscued. Okay, here we go. Here's the, here's the film that we took this morning, inadvertently having lost Dr. Allen again, and we sent Dale to look for him. Down on the mid-deck, he certainly heard a noise, and he, and he got into a locker and opened it up. And lo and behold, what should we find? But, but look at this. We have discovered either an alien space creature or, no, no, it is. It is Dr. Allen. Large, large in personality, but diminutive in stature, he's managed to insert himself in yet another crevice. And here he comes now. We were happy to find him because as soon as we got him back out, he had to be uh, set up and loaded up and pointed in the direction he usually goes, which is right to the window to take pictures. <laughs> There's been no shuttle and the first of two satellites to be retrieved. Should explain, that's where they breathe pure oxygen in order to... Uh reduce the risk of uh, nitrogen coming out of the blood, or the, what's known as the bends for a, a deep sea diet. That's correct. They're just uh, purging the nitrogen 
nitrogen from their blood. Now, if I'm, correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't, can't we tell the difference between these astronauts? The one that's got the stripe around his leg, that's Alan, because he's EVA1. That's right, EV1. EV1. That's how we'll be able to distinguish the two throughout this uh, spacewalk today. Yeah, it is a little difficult when they're both suited up. The spacewalk is scheduled to go for six hours. Uh, they're allowing them a maximum amount of time to retrieve that first Palapa, first of the two errant satellites, $35 million communication satellite that they want to bring aboard the cargo bay and return to Earth for refurbishing, which of course will save the insurers who now own those satellites millions of dollars. NASA gets about uh, five and a half million dollars for salvaging the satellites, and Hughes Aircraft uh, gets another five million for uh, maneuvering the satellite into position. Is that how? Uh, I believe that's Dave Walker. Dave Walker. It's a little difficult to tell from this angle, but I believe it's Dave. The first thing after uh, Joe Allen gets outside, he's going to don the uh, man maneuvering unit and take that for a little test run in the uh, payload bay, make sure its systems are working correctly, and then uh, uh, as Dale goes back to the uh, foot restraint in the back part of the payload bay and then from that point they'll uh, start preparing to go out to the uh, satellite itself donning the uh, stinger device that they're going to be using to latch hold of the satellite. Now, do I understand that when uh, Alan flies out on that jet pack uh, he will not be tethered or have a lifeline to the shuttle? That's that correct. He'll be totally free flying. That's been done uh, several times now with the Solar Max repair mission uh, on flight uh, See, it was the 11th flight of the shuttle. Perhaps we can go back now and show you in animation uh, what the retrieval process will be later on this morning so we can get an idea. And when we see that uh, videotape rolling here, Mike, perhaps you can give us a description of how Alan will fly over to the Palapa okay. and uh, use a stinger device to uh, fasten to the spent rocket casing of the Palapa. The boldest rescue mission yet. It the, uh, satellite Palapa. These are live pictures from the mid-deck, no, the flight deck. Up on a flight. Mike, you can tell us uh, what we're looking at here. That's uh, Rick Houck, I believe, has his back to us. Uh, you're looking from the starboard side of the uh, flight deck over to the, uh, over to the port side. Rick's uh, station as the commander will be on the port side looking aft out the, out the aft window. Here comes Dave Walker up the inner deck ac access hatch. And and there's Anna there's Fisher. Anna. We uh, should bring, bring people up to date that uh, right now, uh, Joe Allen and Dale Gardner are in the airlock uh, in the mid-deck area, preparing to uh, exit, I guess, to check out the MMU, or manned maneuvering, and fly over to Palapa, which at that point will be, what, about 35 feet from the shuttle? Yes, and it should be parked, the orbit will be parked about 35 feet underneath the, uh, underneath the satellite. The two astronauts uh, pre-breathed uh, oxygen this morning to reduce the risk of getting the bends, or the same type of risk that a uh, scuba diver might experience. They uh, are in the airlock and uh, should, if they're right on time schedule, they should be uh, exiting through the uh, airlock into the cargo bay in about 12 minutes from now. Uh, and following that, their flyover comes about an hour after that, where they'll make the attempt to retrieve the first of two errant communication satellites that failed to reach proper orbit when they were launched last February. This approach on this uh, uh, rendezvous is a little different than what was used on the Solar Maximum mission repair, uh, repair mission. Uh, they'll be coming up uh, on that mission. They, they stopped about 800 feet from the satellite and slowly worked their way in. Uh, this time they'll be stopping about 300 feet from the satellite and then working their way into 35 feet. So it'll, it'll save them a little bit more gas. They want, they want to be very conscious of saving the propellant on the orbiter because they have another uh, satellite to, to recover here the day after tomorrow. Commander Hauk looks very pleased with his work, which would indicate to me anyway that uh, the satellite is in a good, stable position and that he has made the rendezvous successfully. We have not actually heard his voice communications affirm that, although early this morning he did report to ground controllers that they had a visual on Palapa, meaning that they did have the uh, satellite in view, that was from about 110 miles away from the satellite, and we understand they're probably less than a mile at this point. I'd be, I'm anxious to see what, uh, what the attitude or the, the motion on the satellite is. Uh, the satellite is normally spin-stabilized at around 50 RPM, and it has been de-spun. Obviously, the, uh, Joe Allen, when he latches hold of it, can't latch hold of something that's spinning at 50 RPM. So uh, they've de-spun it down to 1 RPM, and at that at slow RPM, it might have a slight tumble to it. This is a view through the uh, 
uh, little porthole that's in the uh, mid-deck hatch that looks into the airlock. I can't tell which crew member they're looking at right there. If we could see his leg, we could. The one EV-1 or EVA-1 is uh, has a Joe red... Allen has a red stripe around his. That, that's correct. That's, uh, that is a difficult to see. The airlock is uh, fairly, fairly small. Uh, uh, when you get two people in a EMU or the, or the spacesuit, uh, it can get really crowded. To the uninitiated, it would seem like it takes a long time between the time they close that airlock and the time that they go out of the cargo bay. What goes on during all that time? Oh, they have a, a checklist that they're following. Uh, B-2 satellite which the commander, Rick Houck, is now going through the final rendezvous. Yeah. What are those specs uh, we're seeing? Uh, well, it's, I can't really tell. It could be just, uh, all, generally when you're flying, there's always a little bit of debris floating around the spacecraft coming from water dumps and from uh, some of uh -huh. the residual uh, oxygen venting out of the uh, main engines. So you see, that's the sun glinting off of it. It's difficult to tell what the... Uh, what attitude we were looking at. That's there. Commander Howe. That's that's correct. And he is standing at the the starboard light and attached to the front of his spacesuit, is preparing to leave the cargo bay in an attempt to recover the first of two errant satellites that misfired and failed to go into proper orbit last February. Mike Oh there's the satellite right there. And we see it's the Palazzo and the cargo above the cargo bay. Where they have that zoomed right in. That's the uh, forward end of the Palapa right there. It's rotating, you see it's uh, it was slowed down from its 50 RPM to the RPM that you're looking at right there. And Joe Allen will be uh, taking that stinger device and inserting it in the other end of the palapa in the spent rocket motor. And on the very tip of that stinger device, uh, there's a sheath, and he can operate a hand control from his uh, position that will spring out some toggles that will grab it. He's describing, I guess, how close they, they are, are to the satellite. They, they've, they've remarked several times on how close it is. They, they've commented about reaching out and grabbing Joe it. Joe Allen uh, maintaining his position in the cargo bay, waiting for uh, orbital daylight for the proper lighting conditions for his flyover. And actually, that's a backup mode. If someone should go around with MMU, they could just really, literally grab it and put it in the bay. Again, this is Joseph Allen, who's in the man maneuvering unit, and Dale Gardner behind him, the other astronaut who's in the cargo bay. It's Gardner's job to secure the palapa in the cargo bay when when Allen retrieves it. Gardner is tethered. He's on a tether inside that cargo bay, but that, uh, Alan's correct. free, right? That's correct. He is uh, free flying and will shortly be leaving the bay. This, of course, is the first time NASA has ever attempted such an ambitious undertaking to uh, go out and retrieve, catch up and retrieve, and there it is. That's the satellite Palapa spinning. It looks to me, Mike, as if it's spinning a little faster than the one it, RPM it, it they hoped for. Yeah, I, I noticed that, too. It, it, to me, it looks like a little bit faster than that, but... Uh, uh, still, they won't have any problem with that type of RPM. The good thing about it is it's a stable spin. It's not tumbling end over end. Uh, the satellite was never designed to be, you know, maintained for long periods of time stable at this slow of an RPM. So they were somewhat worried about it developing a tumble. Can you tell what's going on there in the back? It looks like Dale Gardner is fairly busy. Uh, I can't, no, I can't tell exactly what he has in his hand at the moment. He's in a foot restraint that's up on the side of the, uh, the starboard side of the uh, bay. And shortly after uh, Joe Allen docks with the Palapa, he will, well, first thing that happen is Anna, he'll stabilize it, Anna will reach out with the arm and grab it. Here, 
Oh, did you have the yellow part here, Joe? Oh, I see. That bad. There you go. Okay. Hey, let me get you stable so you don't stop. How's that? Okay. I got your rates killed off. Now we can see very clearly how he is in those foot restraints right. on the Wait, side of the target. Or something again? I can't tell. It doesn't look like it. Now that looks like the uh, <laughs> like the end at down. which uh, oh, the stinger is yeah, going to be inserted. Okay. I'll try to get this tube board in, then I'll get it. The nozzle end of the satellite. Mike, just how big is that satellite? It's hard to judge. It's about seven feet, seven feet in diameter. And of course, it's weight really okay, uh, makes it. Right, so it's about uh, 1,500 or 1,800 pounds. On Earth? Yes, out there, of course, it's, uh, it's weightless. That's Even weighing that much in the uh, environment of uh, near zero gravity in space, I guess 1,500 pounds is not very much to move around, is it? No, it's not. In, in fact, uh, I was point out is one, one of the uh, backup systems of rescuing this would be to uh, put uh, one of the crew members in a foot restraint on the end of the remote manipulator arm and take it out to the satellite and just have him literally grab it with his hands and hold it while they move it into the bay and and do the work that's necessary to uh, dock it in the bay. You wouldn't even need the, the stinger or the uh, man maneuvering unit if, if, if you should have to do it that way. Obviously, that would it's not the way you want to do it. See if you can gently maneuver that grapple fixture a little bit further away from the MFR stench. Uh, well, I can't, David, and it's, uh, I'm watching it real close. If I ding it, it'll be ever so gently. Okay. But I can control it to about a sixteenth of an inch, so I don't... No, you didn't get it except when we fired yet, so this is problem. As a reminder, we're looking at uh, Joseph Allen at the top uh, of your screen. That's what's been happening a couple times here. And but Dale Gardner working below him. I'd be nice and stable, and then I'd lose a little bit of control and think that I was a real clutch. But most people would probably say I am, but I bet it was jet firing. The uh, device you see in the right side of your screen is the stinger that will be used to retrieve the uh, west arm. And that will come day after tomorrow. Yeah, ain't got about much more left here. Did we overhear them say they're going to be leaving for sunrise, or are they, they are? So a couple more minutes yet? That's correct. That ought to be a beautiful sight to see the sun. They're uh, over Hawaii. Is that a fire? No, it was me. I bumped into you. And uh, we expect we may lose uh, television pictures for about a minute as they transition between the Hawaii ground station and Goldstone. Okay, I'll see if you can stop that grapple picture from swinging down to hit the... You see on the bottom part of the... Well, you oh, see the circular it, device it, has so a stinger, and the bottom part of it is uh, the I can do it, but grapple that the remote the manipulator arm we used to... It hasn't even touched it. It's like a, a one-ounce force, and it hasn't even touched it yet. Well, you just did, but... It did? That was a trivial touch. Okay, good. All of the equipment that Dale needs to work on the uh, spacecraft after it is grappled with the arm is right in the vicinity of where he's at, so he doesn't have to move from, from those uh, foot restraints. Oh my gosh, look at it. Now, speaking of weight, what does the man maneuvering unit weigh? That's a couple hundred okay, pounds, let's see, uh, 400, 500 pounds. A right lights off, then, I guess. Are you going to manipulate the right lights and not touch yeah, both of us are going to mess with our left lights. Okay. Oh, you got a few more seconds. It's there. funny, we were referring to this walk as a Doug Rogers-like walk, but it's, yeah, if you look right. way back at the early uh, estimates as to what future Very men correct. in space would be looking like in their equipment, it's pretty similar. It is. It's, it's remarkable that yeah, science fiction really writers you. of old came fairly uh, close. I'm going to start on my back head towards the tail. Or maybe NASA that officials way. read a lot of science yeah. fiction. <laughs> well, yeah, I guess you could look at it that way, too. That's affirmative, and when I give you the go, uh, you'll move towards the sun before you try to light out so I can clear you over the pan sun shield. Well, the stuff of science fiction is here today, that's for sure. Houston Discovery, uh, the sun is up, and we're ready to go. The sun is up. You can see the sun rising along the side of the cargo bay, so they just said they're ready to go, so momentarily we should see Alan uh, 
fly over yeah, and we're going to lose, lose our, picture. our signal for a few minutes here before we it won't be animation now. It's back our live pictures now from the cargo bay of the shuttle Discovery. And you're seeing Dale Gardner as he... Uh, ...like reflections from the slowly rotating Palapa satellite just above the orbiter's cargo bay. You can... That's how you can see the sun reflecting off of that sun shield, the PAM sun shield, as the satellite rotates. How long will this uh, take for Alan to... Uh, if everything goes according to it, schedule? It would... After he inserts the uh, stinger, it's only a matter of minutes to, to cinch, cinch himself up to the satellite, and then it's only seconds to, to stabilize it. Is that the satellite we see I above can't, us? I can't tell. It looks like the back of his uh, MMU. Oh. Yes, I think uh, you're right. I think that probably shortly here, they'll get control of the cameras and slow them up so we can get a better view of, uh, of what he's doing. And you can see uh, the Earth now below the uh, oh, yeah. shuttle yeah. as they do come into daylight. Yeah, probably over the... And our cabin, uh, rather our uh, payload bay television now coming into daylight, the Earth below. We uh, see the Pacific just to the west of Baja, California. That's a sight that all of us would love to see. I, I imagine it's spectacular. I know it is looking out the windows of the orbiter, and I can imagine it's order of magnitude more spectacular to be out there in a, in a suit looking out. Not only is this the most ambitious undertaking uh, for NASA, but it's uh, going to save the insurer who now owns the satellite literally millions of dollars if they are able to retrieve and bring it back and refurbish it and resell it. That's correct. I think people ought to keep in mind while watching this is that normally NASA would take years of developing the equipment and the procedures and training for something like this and because of the uh, the fact that it wasn't planned and it is a rescue, uh, the whole thing has been put together in less than nine months. Uh, and that is a, a remarkable feat to, to develop the, the equipment and to develop the procedures. Some of the equipment that you'll see employed later, uh, Dale Gardner will use a, a uh, pruning shear, and I mean a pruning shear, to clip off the, uh, the antenna. The, there's a pole antenna on the forward end of the uh, Palapa, and uh, people at uh, NASA just went down to a hardware store in the local, local area and bought that pruning shear. And the need to cut off that antenna so they can close the cargo That's bay correct. Doors. They need to get rid of that. Uh, so they can close the doors after it's stocked in the payload bay. Go over one more time, Mike, if you would, the size of this payload bay. How many such satellites could they fit in there if they... Oh, of the, of the type that they're, they're mm -hmm. rescuing, they could put in four of those. Uh, so we're talking, easily. how many square foot feet have they got no, it's, not, it's uh, 60 feet long, 15 feet in diameter. The, the, way it, the best way to think of it, if you took two large Greyhound buses, you could put them nose no to the camera moving up. To no tail right in the bay. Okay, oh, there it is. Well it. See the plop of satellite? And Alan lined up to prepare for uh, driving the stinger up into the nozzle. You're looking at the forward end of the flop of there, the antenna end. There's a lot of what we call blooming That's because right. of the reflection of the sun off That's of the front of the space slowly. and the satellite itself. You can see Joe closing. Stop 
You can see his feet there. He's rotating now with the space brake. It'll take him a few minutes now to cinch it down so that he's tight against the satellite, and then he'll use his man maneuvering unit to stabilize it. Stabilize it, meaning to stop, stop the rotation. Stop the rotation and okay. put it in an attitude so Anna can grab it. It is. Actually, it bounces away from the ring, Dale, and then you can crank a little faster. And... Now you can clearly see Joe Allen's uh, feet rotating with the satellite. He apparently has made the uh, successful coupling with that stinger now device. cranking down our ratchet handle to tighten up the grip on the Palapa satellite. After that, he will use his man maneuvering it. Pulling it down. Okay, the is broken over. Stop the clock. I've got it tied. Stop the clock. I've got it tied. Now he should be acting. And he is firmly attached now to the Palapa. Stay at home. He's going and, to attitude. Uh, I've got a thousand pounds. Can you imagine how that man must feel there? Out in the middle of nowhere. And we're close to losing our TV picture. Sure, he feels wonderful. You can see Baja, California, just uh, beneath them and crossing the coast of Mexico. Helen will use his uh, maneuvering unit to slow the rotation rate of the satellite, and we're losing our television picture. Joe Allen, astronaut Joe Allen, has attached himself to the Palapa satellite. And it's preparing to, you can see we've stopped rotation. Yeah, stopped it. It's, it's, uh, he's used his attitude hold of the... And I think we'll hear conversation okay, now between Anna Fisher... Okay, so we're going to start a right jaw now, and that's going to be 180 degrees. And, uh, okay, Alan. Okay, right jaw for 180, okay? Same way. Anna, Fisher's, Anna okay, Fisher's job is to grapple both the astronaut now and satellite and bring it into the, the satellite combination 180 of the degrees. cargo bay. Um, uh, rotating about the center of mass, Anna, so I'm going to come over... over Mexico. The grapple fixture is this rectangular affair, I believe, at the uh, right side of your screen, just to below Alan. Uh, yeah, it is. It's a little difficult to see right now. He's turning a little bit on us. And there it is. There, there it is. is. You're looking right and at now it. Now we see the uh, grapple fixture there that the mechanical arm will grasp. We're looking at the uh, spacecraft with the camera mounted on the end. Mark. Now he stopped at dead in his tracks. Boy, this is going to be absolutely perfect. And this is exactly what Anna's looking at to dock. She's flying, flying the uh, arm. That's on the end of the arm, that camera, and she's flying it over there. Does she use that little sighting device at the top? Alan reading That's off uh, GN2 pressure, nitrogen pressure in the MMU. He has plenty left. A device, uh, it has the horizontal line and the circle, and there's a spike that sticks out of the circle. Stabilizing the satellite in position for the mechanical arm to grasp it. We see the grapple fixture there in the right portion, center portion of the screen. So the object is to line that uh, shaft that push the key in the center of the little... That you're looking at it with. Uh, we'll move right in close and... Uh, down on that fixture, and uh, it'll essentially be uh, only free. And then below it, you see a spike sticking out of a triangular triangular set of uh, mm -hmm. uh, guides there. 
and that's the spike that the snare is inside the later on the maneuvering the mechanical arm. Joseph Allen and Dr. Anna Fisher making history. Okay, yeah, give me a little bit more right jaw. Okay, right jaw. Mark. Anna Fisher giving uh, Allen instructions on which way to uh, fire Hello. his jet thrusters on that jet backpack. And it looks like she's got it almost perfectly right. lined up now. Give me a pickup, please. Good job. Signal and we're getting a brief break in television as we alarm in for the docking and the grapple. The grapple device is right at the bottom of your picture, just below that. Uh, looks like a sight, a T affair. An official will move the end of the remote control arm onto that grapple point, and then what she does? She locks it in. There's a you throw a switch and mm -hmm. it causes uh, wires the inside the remote is, uh, uh, the manipulator arm to seize the, that uh, spike that's sticking the spacecraft. out. The camera is mounted on the very end of the mechanical arm. The spacecraft uh, satellite and Joe Allen are actually stable while the arm moves in uh, to the target. This arm is a 50-foot long robotic arm mounted on the uh, port side of the shuttle. So. What would you say? They're probably 30 feet, 20 feet from the uh, shuttle itself now? Uh, okay. While the work is done on the uh, rocket okay. motor uh, end of the satellite. What we're doing is Dale is the port temporarily stowing the, uh, the A-frame. When we get sunrise, Joe's going to come down quickly to the control board and we'll be able to start the These are live pictures now from the shuttle okay, discovery now, as Dale Gardner and the Joseph Allen got one dap change for you when you're ready coming. are making preparations and describing what procedure they're going to use because of the problem they've okay, run into in attaching an A-frame to the satellite. KU band uh, pointing problems during this next teeter's pass. We would like to tighten up the vernier attitude dead band to two degrees versus the five degrees we've got right At now. At the top of your picture is the satellite being held okay, by the uh, shuttle's work. robotic arm. Anna Fisher is operating that 50-foot robot arm. She, by the way, helped develop the robot arm back in the early days of the shuttle mission. Dale Gardner is stowing the, the A-frame device that he had previously been working on uh, in preparation for this backup procedure of, uh, of uh, stowing the satellite. As Dale Gardner down in the lower part of the NASA select picture uh, is temporarily stowing the uh, A-frame. Are you clear on your separation maneuver to get off the top of that thing? I'm just going to pull a pin, David, and I'm going to put them back in the hole. Uh, my CTAs are just gone. Uh, my gyro power is on, but I'm not in that hole. And I'm going to go to normal. Okay, that'll be good. Don't push off too hard when you move away from it. Pardon me? Do not push off too hard when you move away from it. I'm going to come off very So the plan at this point is for astronaut Joseph Allen to disconnect himself. He's still attached to the Palapa satellite after he retrieved it. He's about to disconnect himself and fly with his man maneuvering unit back into the cargo bay, stow that unit, and then help Gardner uh, hand stow the uh, satellite. That, that's correct. An official will maintain hold on the satellite with the arm. Well, the when Joe Allen disconnects from the 
satellite. Yeah, we'll fly Look. down and uh, dock the uh, MMU to its uh, support the structure. He'll quick off that, take yeah. it off quickly, and you move over it, to the uh, starboard side of the orbiter. Sounds as if he's disconnected himself from that stinger for which is he's got some pit pins he's supposed to do that. The stinger is the apparatus used to uh, couple the astronaut with the uh, satellite in order to stop its rotation. And you can see right in the right side of your picture here, the one that's standing by for the second retrieval of Westar, which if they finish this one is, a, is scheduled to occur on uh, Wednesday. Well, this is a procedure that they had had planned on in the event they, they had problems. Okay, so it is a backup property, procedure. Back but not one they would have preferred. You're correct, absolutely. Yeah, I'm going to back off and I can move myself down a little bit. That would appear to be the elbow That's camera. That's the elbow camera on the RMS. I give myself just a little bit of a motion of the sort I want. You can see the forward, uh, the antenna has been clipped off the forward end of the uh, palapa that you see in the upper part of the screen. And as uh, advertised, we were supposed to lose signal for about okay, discovery, but they have run into a problem of not being able to attach an A-frame structure, which was to be used to berth the satellite, and they're now having to make uh, accommodations to uh, get that satellite back in the cargo bay in another manner. The perspective here is we're looking from the cabin of uh, the shuttle Discovery to the aft end of the cargo bay. That's correct. That's Dale over there working at, at the uh, foot restraint area on the uh, starboard, aft starboard, actually more of the mid starboard part of the payload bay. I'm not interfering with the arm, am I? So you're in good shape. Keep coming towards the cabin a little bit more. Okay. Up until this point, the uh, mission had gone nearly flawlessly. Uh, if you're not using the A camera, I pick it straight up, so I don't think it when I go into this foot right here. Okay. okay. This is the first major problem encountered. I suppose, Mike, at this point, uh, time becomes of the essence, doesn't it? It, it does. Uh, obviously, they're limited uh, on the amount of consumables they have in their suits, so this, this prolongs the EVA. Uh, there you go. Uh, we're getting a view of it now. Yeah, Dave, I'm going to ask you also to... Okay, uh... Joe is free of the satellite and is flying back into the uh this is a portion of the remote controlled down. arm. That if they'll tilt down, we'll be able to see the satellite being held. Dale Gardner on the left and Joe Allen on the right. Joe Allen's the one with the stripe around his uh spacesuit uh trousers. Right around the uh, thigh. The plan is is for uh Joe to get in the foot restraint that's in the, the West Star pallet area. Anna to hand him the satellite, disconnect from the satellite, Anna will disconnect from the satellite, and Joe will hold the satellite tail by the forward end, pointing it toward the toward Dale Gardner, who will be in the Palapa foot restraint area, and he will then put in the uh, disconnect the stinger device, which is still there, and put on the ring restraint that, that is used to berth the satellite. For those of you who just joined us, to recap, the problem that they've run into was an unforeseen structure on the satellite Palapa that interfered with properly positioning what's called the A-frame structure. That was to be used to, to berth the uh, satellite in the cargo bay. So now they've, uh, been, they've stowed the A-frame since they can't attach it to the satellite, and they're going to hand berth the uh, satellite pal uh, Palapa. Essentially, uh, Joe, Joe Allen will take the place of that A-frame by hand-holding it. And Dale will do the identical thing that he was planning on doing before. It's just that it would have been uh, Anna holding it with the remote manipulator arm using the A-frame. Now Joe is the A-frame. Okay, I got it. I broke it free. Okay. 
at the right uh, bottom portion of your screen is the remote controlled arm and then at the end of that arm is the satellite it's out of your picture right now but the anna fisher is holding uh, the satellite palapa at the end of the robot robotic arm when these two astronauts uh, gardner and alan are ready she will lower that uh, arm so that uh, alan can grab a hold and hand hold i guess the top portion right? that's correct the, the top, top portion port. he and, has to hold on top and bring it on into the cargo bay where uh, gardner will fasten the a ring in the base of the cargo bay to secure that uh, satellite for its return to Earth. The uh, the stinger device is still attached to the satellite. That's what the remote manipulator arm is grappled to. And what will happen is uh, after, after Joe has hold of it, it'll be released and uh, Dale will pull out that stinger in preparation for putting on the uh, ring structure that... Okay, and we'll continue our live coverage of the shuttle mission as they attempt to retrieve that Palapa satellite. Stay with us. Then I'll go ahead and get the other two aboard out so I don't, you know, go through this more than once. As mission specialist Joseph Allen on the left side of your screen and Dale Gardner prepare to hand birth, they run into a problem, to prepare to hand hold and hand bring in the satellite, Palapa, that we can't see at this moment, but is being held on the robot arm by Dr. Anna Fisher. Hey, Anna, uh, you're going to present the antenna in to me. I want to inspect it in a few minutes to see if there's a place I might get her to, in addition to holding on to the floor bar. Okay, I'll bring it over and uh, you just tell me where you want it. Okay. We can see Alan uh, here has, is in the foot restraints and is waiting for Anna Fisher to move that satellite over to him. One of the most time consuming uh, parts of this contingency operation now behind them. Uh, that usually takes a little while to make that happen. Uh, Gardner now going down to get the tools and Palapa now being swung over. This is the satellite, the top right hand portion of your screen. She's going to hand the forward part of that satellite. It's upside down, right? Right. You're looking at the mm -hmm. at the uh, top part of it right the now. Arm She's going to hand that. The onto the uh, Stinger temple fixture, which is on the other end of the plopa. You can see that pole antenna is missing. It was clipped off already. We understand he clipped that antenna off with a okay, common yeah, pair of tuning shears that was that were purchased at a hardware store. Yeah. Have to go That's right. And uh, I hope, hope this is going to be possible for you. Um, and that, as I said before, that A-frame was a temporary device that that would have been used by the remote manipulator arm to, to hold the satellite. Now Joe, Joe Allen has to substitute in that role and just hold it with his hands. Very briefly, we understand the, uh, the problem I was an, an unforeseen okay, structure on the top of this satellite okay, well, that prevented them from attaching the A-frame. That's Dale Garner describing that he's prepared to, uh, he's done all the initial procedures prepared to, to birth that or to secure it with the ring coupling device. That's right, and that ring coupling device, when you see it lifted up, it'll have three legs on it and a, a ring structure in the middle. That weighs 500 pounds uh, on her, obviously it's weightless up there. And he will guide that into a soft, he has to remove the stinger first. And then he'll guide this thing into a soft dock and use a power tool to cinch it down.
keep it down more uh, a board ship than a uh, fore aft. Okay, I just want to caution you that you've got to be really careful yeah. that you can tail it on that MFR grapple picture. I don't think you'll be able to see it once you have hold of it. Oh, I see what you're saying. Okay. Can you help us clear that, Dale? Yeah. Okay. Now, go ahead, uh, Joe. Talk to Anna. Okay, this has got to, to be an extremely uh, delicate maneuver. I mean, if they all, move that in the wrong direction, they could the damage the space shuttle. That That's okay, correct, uh, although the chances of that are, are unlikely. Uh, uh, but you do have to be careful. Point. I'm going to try to get a, a tether around that end, so I've got something to... Joe is... Uh, okay, well, hang on. She's bringing it over to wow. Joe right now. I can put it around this end. That's the way to do it. Okay, okay something right in there and where I got the up couch. Hang on just a second. You're doing fine. Looks like Alan's preparing to attach a tether. Yeah, he, he wants to be tethered to it. He's going to have, have to hand hold it, though, in addition to being tethered to, to, to keep it in the attitude he wants. Okay, that'll help us a lot, Jerry. Thank you. Okay, now we're going to get the stinger out there. Yeah, we're going to get the stinger out there. Yeah, we're going to get the stinger out there. Yeah, we're going to get the stinger out there. Yeah, we're going to get the stinger out there. Yeah, we're going to get the stinger out there. Yeah, we're going to get the stinger out there. Yeah, we're going to get the stinger out there. Yeah, we're Stop. That's a uh, antenna reflector that normally pops up that had the satellite reached its geosynchronous orbit that he is working with right now on the upper end of the satellite. And it looks as if he's wrapping that tether around that. Yeah, it does. Obviously, the tether would prevent it from drifting off if he could lose a quick down, but he really wants to hold it with his hands. Now the stinger is still in the uh, aft end of that satellite and has to be removed. Is that correct before right. they can stow it? Absolutely. And Dale, Dale will remove it. There's a handle, he just throws one handle and that leaves the, the toggle part of it in the throat of the nozzle and he can stow the stinger then. See, peeling away some of the thermal insulation to get a better grip on this instruction. We should point out they're coming up on the end of four hours now on their spacewalk. Better move it towards you a little bit, Joe. And six hours is about it. Yeah, they'll have to start uh, thinking about going back to the airlock. I got it, Anna. Yeah. Okay, now, Joe, Joe, be careful when, when you say you've got it, that when she releases it, you don't spring right back down towards the bank. You look like you're loaded up and aimed towards the bank. Okay. Well, I'll go up there and keep that from happening. No, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to hold it. When she lets go, I'm going to gently move it down towards you, Dale. Ever so gently, okay? Well, first thing you're going to have to do is lean back. Yep. Okay. Take the load off it. Okay. It's almost uh, a ton okay, of satellite right. he has in his hands there. Okay, this is going to take a few seconds, Joe, and I've got to set cameras up and get ready to go okay. away from you. How's the dimension going to be, Dale? Are you going to... Uh, it's looking like you're going to be too close to me, but... If that's true, then I'll work from this deal far back here. Don't sweat it. Okay, I'll make it work. Well, we expected this to be dramatic, but I don't think quite this dramatic. No, okay. I'm sure that... Uh, that crew would have liked to have seen that uh, common Houston, bracket uh, there. We'd be interested in knowing Joe's tether configuration. I've got, uh, Jerry, a tether around my, uh, on my left wrist. I've got it around the floor bar, uh, up near the Omni. Roger, copy that. I guess uh, we're happy with that as long as you stay in Verniers. <laughs> and tether back to the source myself. Okay, I get points. I can also release it pretty quickly if I have to. Good question. Okay. I think the crew has done an excellent job of uh, getting to this point as rapidly as they did. Just tell me what you're going to let go, Anna. Procedure and going to a backup procedure this time. Okay, ready? Because I'm relaxing now. Okay, she is ready to release, Joe. Okay. Anna Fisher, ready to release the satellite from the end of the robotic arm, and then Alan is expected to hand maneuver that 1,500-pound satellite on down into the cargo bay where Garden will secure it. Now, Joe, okay. 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 
Hitting that grapple fixture there that's sticking up on the uh, starboard side. And that's Dale Gardner scurrying up to make sure yeah. he doesn't hit the side of the cargo bay. There's no danger to the orbiter on that. They obviously don't want to see the satellite damage. He'll tilt that down and then Dale will pull off the stinger. Dale, I got it. It's coming down towards that bracket again. And I'm going to the grapple picture. That one. What? Joseph, you, you have to lean back with it consciously because uh, each time that you relax, it comes down into the bay. Go. Let me tell you, you've got to kind of point it towards the port weight more. There you go. I, I'm not straight back from you. I'm over here in the middle of the bay, you think. Okay. Okay. Let me get uh, myself in here now. Very, very slow and gentle motion, Joseph. That's Dave Walker talking to Joe about how to move, Real slow. move it. Some people might be curious as to why you can't just sort of lay it down in the bay or throw a net or something, but you need it for entry and landing, you need it restrained rigidly. That's why they need to put that structure on the on the end of it. Okay, now Gardner's down. gotten a hold of the other side of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just a second, guys. There is really a lot of stuff coming out of the back end here. I mean, a, a lot. Okay, Joe, I'm going to kind of put it where I want it, okay? Okay? All he has to do is throw one hand. That's the stinger he has his uh, hand right. on now. That has to be removed in order to be able to stow this uh, absolutely, satellite. Absolutely, because the, the ring that it mates to is the identical ring that the uh, uh, device and that the uh, the ring device mates to the to the ring device inside the uh, satellite. That stinger has to be removed. There it goes. Coming out of the back end. Okay, I got the stinger in my hand. Okay, Joseph, up, up very slowly, very slowly. And just take it at the top point where you can hold on to it for a while while I still the stinger, okay? Okay. This is cold. Just take it up there and relax. And we'll get it back in position for the adapter in a second. I got the old stinger in my little old hand. <laughs> and I better shudder it just a second. Dale's going to stow that and get it out of the way. I came off there, Rick, just flick as a whistle. It's remarkable that he's able to hold on and control the movement of a more than a thousand pound object, even in zero gravity of space. Even though it's weightless, though, it still has uh, mass and inertia, so that's why he has to move it real slow, because if he develops any rates on it, then, you know, it's liable to get out of control. So that's why Dave Walker keeps cautioning him about moving ever so slowly. If we go back to the mission, and I've forgotten the designation of it, but it was the one where they recovered solar max. 41 perhaps, Charlie. 41 Charlie. We perhaps remember that George Nelson ran into that problem when he grabbed the wing of that uh, satellite. This is the Stinger yeah. device that was used to uh, lock onto that satellite that Joe Allen uh, retrieved. Now, you'll translate with a big object trick. It's, uh, you can't tell from this attitude, but the actual Parker about the four feet of that Stinger has been left inside of the uh, nozzle of the satellite. You need to be a little bit careful about getting tapped in the MFR with it, but, okay. Looks like... Straight, and I'll try and tell you which way to move. <laughs> so Alan looks like okay, this Atlas like holding up the world there. Can't, can't help you there. Yeah, see it's... Oh, one point, one pound force is not helping me right now. You can just pull me right back. Yeah, you may have to actually... 
actually take some out of it and, uh, and lock the reel. Apparently he's getting pulled back by his own tether. That seems to be a problem he's having in getting, mm -hmm. getting the stinger right, stone. Obviously, housekeeping yeah. in a situation like this is important. You don't want a lot of uh, items temporarily still drifting around. You'd like to get them put away. Now, had the A-frame been, been installed, it would be across the upper part of the uh, of the satellite where Joe Allen is where holding. Where Joe right? is holding. He's and, actually and acting as the A-frame. Exactly. And A-frame and remote manipulator arm, because had everything gone off right, the remote manipulator arm would now be holding it up at the top part of the satellite like he is, and Dale would be attaching this ring structure that he'll, as soon as he's done with the stinger, he'll start doing that. Okay, out of here. I'll give you five minutes to do a little work. Okay, Joe, I said that you're comfortable there. Not very. Well, I'm doing okay, David. I'm going to give you... I'm doing okay. Whatever you mind. Here again is Dale Gardner stowing that uh, stinger that was attached to the palapa. It was vital to its retrieval. This device, we should point out, was all designed and manufactured between last February and now. An no, incredible uh, feat in itself. It is. It's, uh, I think, a monument to Yankee ingenuity and just plain hard work to come up with some of these uh, tools and uh, procedures as rapidly as they did. But is the, that the stow point that he's approaching? It, it's stowed over on the port okay, side, right, right where he's working. You can, Dale. Your hands are clear of it. Okay. Okay, Dale, I'm going to give you five minutes to do a little work. Well, if they stayed out another four hours, that was not a record, wouldn't that, it? Oh, well, it would, and, and obviously they're not. Well, they're not going to need that type of time to put on that. Uh, I'm there yet. I hesitate to say that this early, but I wouldn't think they'd need that type of time to put on that ring structure. The consumables in the in the uh, spacesuit are water for cooling and for and oxygen, of course, for breathing. And uh, as you just heard, they had plenty of both. The device that he's going to now, after he stows that, is in the center and attached to the to the satellite is in the center floor of the payload bay. Apparently that inertial reel device, which you just described, is really giving him fits. Yeah, it is. It seems to be having a tough time with it. The inertial reel device being the uh, apparatus that uh, contains the tether line, right? Yeah. That's correct. A tether uh, that, that keeps him. There's a slide wire that runs along each side of the payload bay, and he's attached to that. Uh, obviously, you don't want to drift off into space. If you can see the importance, uh, watching him work here, the importance of foot restraints. Uh, if you're not restrained by your feet, it's it's very difficult to do even what might appear to be a simple task. Because every time you exert any kind of uh, pressure, you you start turning yourself. That's right. Again, Dale Gardner is stowing the uh, sting so-called stinger device on the port side of the shuttle. We're looking uh, the picture you're looking at is from the cabin from the forward section of the shuttle discovery aft toward the uh, tail section. It's remarkable how Joe Allen has that uh, satellite just, it's not moving at all. He has that frozen. <laughs> Joe Allen looks like a statue over there. He does. That, that would be the top portion of your screen. Uh, Joe Allen, you can see there's two legs and uh, on the left hand side and he's holding, actually hand holding the Palapa satellite while Gardner stows this uh, stinger device and then they'll, he'll return over to the area where Allen is and hand berth, maneuver that satellite down into the cargo bay where it'll be secured. 
if this ring structure that they're going to attach has, uh, if, if you looked at it uh, in plan form, has three uh, legs to it. There's a circular ring that attaches to the satellite and it has three legs. And at the ends of those legs are just trunnion pins, just round pins that uh, fit into latches in the floor of the payload bay to hold the satellite in the first return to Almost three hours and 30 minutes they've been out there in space. What's wrong? I can't tell, Dale. It looks to me like it ought to have locked. Oh, oh, I I know, it's time to land. Oh, I got a ratchet hand all the way back in. The ratchet handle? Yep. It's having some problem. Actually, there's a, another one of those Stinger devices being, that's carried for Westar. And there's a spare Stinger tip that can be inserted in either one of them in case those toggles didn't work. They carried a backup Stinger. Cards are now moving. It's a good sticking dog just far enough. Okay. One more time. Apparently, Parker moved the ratchet handles forward so that he could uh, clear into the uh, attachment fixture. Wires and such. Okay, I see that. If he were not able to stow this thing, can't he just let it go overboard? He could. Uh, uh, you need it, all right? We don't, they don't really need it. A, well, you don't need it if the one that, that we have for Westar work is going to oh, work, but you don't know that, so you'd okay. prefer to keep keep something like this uh, until you're absolutely sure you won't need it, because it could be used for Western. The other thing, too, is if you released it, uh, it would be debris around the orbiter that then Rick Halk would have to worry about avoiding. Can't just give it a good show. Oh, he could, well, <laughs> he could, he, he could. It looks like he got yeah, it. Yeah, it looks time. like it latched that time. Dale Gardner uh, securing the so called stinger. Good work. Do yep. I have it yet? Oh, I thought you did. Not yet. <laughs> I think Joe Allen's getting a little impatient, too. <laughs> well, I imagine he's, he's enjoying the sights up yeah. there. Obviously, I would think uh, Mission Control is a little anxious to get that uh, satellite back in. Yeah, it came up. The That's came up on this side now. obviously priority one. Okay. I'm sure they're thinking they had ready to both the time for that. And got two pips in. Okay. okay, he's got it. He's got that stowed. Okay, now take a little bit of a breather, why don't you, Dale? Uh-oh, do it over the far. Okay. He's going to go back and get in the uh, foot restraint. Is this hard work in space? It it can be. Uh, you use a lot of upper body strength when you're working on things. Your legs are are kind of a hindrance in the way. Uh, you end up using a lot of arm muscles, so you can get fatigued in the arms fairly quickly. Now, coming back into your picture on the top left-hand side, you can see the mission specialist Joe Allen holding the uh, satellite Palapa. He's in a foot restraint already. That was a beautiful picture of him holding That is, and Dale's trying to get in his foot restraints. Discovery, Houston. Yeah, you got, you got eight, or, eight or nine minutes. Now, once he gets in there... Yeah, Dale, what, what do you need to do next? Are you going to drop dock it? Are you going to try to put the... Uh, uh, Put the uh, shower cap on it. Now, the shower cap device they're talking about is a plastic cap that goes over the 
nozzle to keep uh, ashes and slag from the spent rocket motor from falling, out, guys. falling into the bay. There's some stuff coming out, yeah. Yeah, we can see some stuff coming out of there. The stuff coming out that they've been referred to it several times, I assume that that's exhaust particles from the spent rocket engine. That, that's correct. It's just the slag that's left over. Of course, that stinger device is, was banged around in here and loosened up some, so on entry, they don't want it, all that stuff falling out into the payload bay, so they're going to put a cover over it. Gardner's saying that he feels they're on their timeline and that they have no serious problem if, if uh, all goes well from here. Control, on, uh, that debris is uh, carbon coming out of the nozzle of the satellite. Uh, tests uh, pre-flight showed it uh, presented no hazard uh, to the crewmen. But they will put a shower cap, uh, so-called uh, restrainer, over that uh, nozzle. So Gardner is preparing to uh, cover up the uh, rocket end of the uh, satellite, and we'll be back in take two uh, with more coverage, more of our extended coverage. Into the cargo bay to berth it and secure it so it can be returned to Earth. And what date? I'm sorry. The problem they ran into is uh, an unforeseen structure on the satellite prevented them from attaching an A-frame, which was the way they had intended to berth this satellite. So they've fallen back to the alternative method, and that is doing it by hand. At the bottom of your screen is Dale Gardner, and he right now is installing, I guess, what they call a shower cap. What's that? that that's correct. It's uh, a cap that goes over the nozzle of the spent rocket motor to prevent debris from falling out as as the uh, shuttle re-enters and lands. The vibrations would cause this debris to fall out into the payload bay. They'd like to avoid that if possible, and that's what uh, Dale is putting over. He needs to put that over first before he can put that ring structure that that. Uh, has to be fitted to the rear end of the satellite. Now, the, the rocket motor that, that he's working around there uh, is what they call the Apogee motor. Uh, that is not the one that malfunctioned that, that put the satellite in an incorrect orbit in the first place. That was a, a what we call a PAM booster, which was separated and uh, what you see was what was left, and the Apogee motor was fired later on to get the satellite into a correct orbit for retrieval by the shuttle. We should point out that Palapa is a $35 million communications satellite that failed to reach proper orbit when it was deployed from the shuttle, successfully deployed from the shuttle uh, last February. A uh, twin sister called West Star 6 is up there too, and uh, they're hoping that after they recover and retrieve this satellite today, that the day after tomorrow, They'll be able to go after West Star 6 and bring it home. Uh, the insurers who now own these two satellites, of course, stand to make millions of dollars or save millions of dollars in what they've already paid out to the original owners by bringing them back to Earth, having them refurbished, and then reselling them. Again, this is Dale Gardner working to, to install what's called the shower cap, a cover which covers the rocket engine, the now spent rocket engine, on the satellite which apparently has been spewing a considerable amount of debris, and they don't want that debris around the uh, space shuttle or in the cargo bay, especially during re-entry. Yeah, that stinger device that was inserted in the toggles on it, uh, I'm sure disrupted some of that from the side walls and the inside of it. Just behind Gardner is the Telesat uh, cover that uh, contained uh, the now-launched uh, communication satellite for Canada. That was one of the first uh, orders of business of this mission to put into space two new communication satellites, the Anik D, owned by Telesat Canada, and a second communication satellite leased by the Navy. I think, that, again, the crew deserves uh, some kadoos on how fast they were able to switch from the nominal plan of using the A-frame and the remote manipulator arm into this uh, handheld operation. I, I was really, truly uh, 
amazed at how fast they were able to do that. It didn't take Dale Gardner long to make known his decision. In fact, he told ground controllers in yeah. no uncertain terms, look, we cannot berth this satellite the way we had planned. And that, that's important to uh, if you can make that determination early. Now he's talking about the adapter. That's the ring adapter. It's interesting to know that they're using the same uh, apparatus that was used to hold, the, secure this satellite when it was launched to bring it back. That's the. Uh, that's a good view of the of the shower curtain going over the nozzle. You're looking right up into the what was the nozzle of the apogee kick motor. Looks like he's almost got it covered. <laughs> His comment there. Joe's comment was he's glad it's not a lease at. Lease that weighs 15,000 pounds. Less than a minute through Tedris. Ten Four times the weight of this one. Zero niner. The, the outer ring that you see in the upper left-hand part of the screen. Uh, I'm sorry, it's the uh, inner ring there that is where they're going to adapt the uh, the piece of equipment that will be used to berth the satellite. They'll be going into darkness here. In fact, I guess they, they really are, are in yeah, darkness now. Are. Those are lights from the cargo bay. Discovery Houston uh, going over the hill. Dale, if you don't uh, get joy on that in about five more minutes, press on. Okay, I got that. Telling uh, Dale there to abandon, uh, if he can't get that shower cap on in the next couple minutes, to abandon that idea and get to work on the uh, gun structure. And we're seeing the first flickers. I'm afraid we're going to lose our picture as they go uh, out of range of the tracking and data relay station, which is where they're sending their television signals now. But they will be back, and we'll pick up uh, and have more live pictures as uh, we continue our Palapa. They ran into problems when they were unable to attach an A-frame to this uh, satellite. We're looking over your shoulder off the uh, RMS. And so they've had to resort to a backup technique, and that involves hand berthing this 1,500-pound satellite. Mike, tell us what we're w watching here. Okay, he, they have the uh, ring adapter out of the out of its restraints and and attached to the uh, satellite, and he's torquing down some bolts that uh, will close some uh, claws to hold it more more snugly. So uh, they have really moved along here. And we should point out that at the other end of that satellite, Joseph Allen is holding on. Originally, this was supposed to have been held by the uh, remote control arm, right. which would have given uh, Gardner certainly a much more steady platform to fasten down this ring. This ring device is necessary to berth the satellite in a cradle, a locking device, which is in the bottom of the cargo bay to bring it back securely to Earth. Yeah, Joe Allen is the A-frame and RMS right now, and, and uh, just Dale is uh, moving so tighten down these nine claws that uh, uh, firmly grip the, the ring to which the solid rocket, the, the old Pam solid rocket attached. We apologize for taking all that fun work away from you. So we apologize for taking all that fun work away from you. We have... Uh, we should point out the astronauts are approaching five hours in their spacewalk, but uh, they have consumed, apparently, less uh, oxygen and less water for their cooling systems than were anticipated, and uh, Mission Control has told us that they could stay out there for another, oh, two or three hours. Now they're in good shape now. Uh, once he gets these uh, nine bolts torqued down, uh, the satellite would be ready to be berthed. You can see he's torquing these just like you do uh, the lugs on a on a wheel of your auto when you change uh, change to a spare tire. We should point out that uh, this satellite failed to go into proper orbit when it was deployed last February. Through no fault of NASA's, it was the uh, rocket engine we're looking at that uh, failed to fire properly. 
and it along with a sister satellite, West R6. Oh, I see what this is down here. It is uh, aimed at the jet black, isn't it? Yeah. Very thick, heavy metal. Oh yeah, see that thing? Yeah, that was hitting a cross. It's enormous. It's in the lower right, just below uh, Dale's right elbow, you see a silvery cylinder uh, protruding from uh, that structure that he's attaching to the satellite. There are three of those silver trunnions, those silver uh, cylinders, okay, that, three, that uh, are guided no, into no, latches no, in the floor no, of the no, payload bay, no, and there's latches that no, come across those silver no, trunnions and hold no, them into the bottom no, of the payload no, bay. I think this whole operation has been a remarkable demonstration of why people in space or a, a human aspect of working in space is so important. You could have never done this with robotics. I imagine there's some proponents of robotics in the listening audience that would argue with me on it, but. Well, Gardner is doing a good deal of uh, physical work here. He just made the remark, I hope you have a good dinner for us when we come back yeah. here. Yeah. Now, that, this is the type of work that is fairly tiring in a suit because uh, the suit is, is, has fi almost five, four and a half pounds of uh, pressure in it, and uh, it makes it fairly rigid. So he is having to move his arm against the rigidity of the suit, and he can tire fairly quickly. That means he's got yeah. only one to go? No, there, I think he has two to, two to do. Ten. Okay. Well, no, there's nine total, but I, he's not going sequentially. I see. He's going like you go back and yeah. forth on putting right. the, the lugs on a wheel when you yeah. tighten it up. You don't start at one point and move around. You do it across. You can see those silver trunnions sticking up in the upper part. Right. And there's That's another one. Secure to the uh, the locking device in right. the cargo bay. You can see all three of them now. Uh, it looks like a triangle, and, and though each of those silver trunnions will be held by a, a claw, electric-driven claw. And what would have happened if everything would have worked right is there would, that A-frame on top uh, would have been held by the remote manipulator arm, and Anna Fisher would have guided those three uh, silver trunnions into guides and into the floor of the cargo bay where they would be latched. Now. Dale and uh, and Joe will have to do that manually. The shuttle is over the uh, Pacific Ocean. It should be approaching the west coast of the United States at this point. You can see the Earth below them. And they'll be passing uh, across uh, the Baja Peninsula. They could actually look north and see the birthplace of this satellite up there in uh, El Segundo, California. I even see Joe Allen on the left side of your screen with the, he's the one with the uh, stripe around his thigh. That's how you tell the two astronauts apart and, when they're out in a spacewalk. And Joe has been holding that uh, satellite in position for the last uh, almost two hours. Okay, we need to go back uh, clockwise at your frame, Joe, for nine. How are you doing, Joe? But as you pointed out, that's not much of a, uh, a job for Joe Allen. He's not having to hold his hands up as we might think here on Earth since it's all zero gravity. That, that's correct. He, now, he is having to exert a little bit more force now that uh, uh, Dale is working at the other end because he has to counter the forces that uh, Dale is putting in. But uh, just holding this mass, uh, even though it's 1,500 pounds or so, uh, is not a... Is not a problem if all you're doing is just holding it. It's it's weightless and uh, uh, that that is not very tiring. I think Dale is the one that's going to want the biggest stake tonight because he's working the hardest out there. And uh, uh, developments warrant that. Meantime, we're going to go on. With, uh, phase now of birthing the uh, satellite, thirty-five million dollar Palapa satellite, which they successfully retrieved from a useless orbit this morning, but ran into problems when they were unable to attach an A-frame structure 
to the satellite uh, so that they could bring it into its berthing position using the uh, shuttle's remote-controlled arm. Instead, they've had to hand-hold it and hand-berth it. Dale Gardner at the bottom of your screen, and Joseph Allen is out of your screen, but he's on the left side there, his hand holding the satellite as they prepare to move it into its docking platform. Yeah, it looks like Dale is done attaching the ring adapter. Uh, you can see one of the trunnions at the, uh, the right upper part of the screen that'll be, be latched to the floor of the payload bay. Dale's stowing some uh, tools, it appears, and Joe has been standing there holding that satellite now for, I guess, about two hours. There's a good view of what the uh, ring adapter looks like with its trunnions. out to the Palapa B-2 satellite and attached an elaborate handle to it so the shuttle's robot arm could pluck it from space. That went fine, but stowing the 1,200-pound, 8-foot-long satellite inside the shuttle's cargo hold proved to be more of a tussle than they planned. The astronauts first have had to get other equipment out of the way and tied down before stowing that satellite manually. But perseverance appears to be paying off. You're looking at the... Uh, Shuttle's robotic arm on the right side of your picture, and that's the Stinger device that will be used, uh, hopefully, to recover Westar 6 on Wednesday. The view is from the uh, main cabin to the aft portion of the uh, shuttle. They have managed, we're pleased to report, to recover, retrieve, and successfully stow in the cargo bay the Palapa satellite. A $35 million piece of equipment that was uh, put into useless orbit when it failed to... Uh, reach a geosynchronous orbit okay, last February. That was the same case with Westar okay, 6. To they had to resort to uh, manually hand-holding and hand-berthing this satellite today okay, because the, they found that there was an obstacle okay, on the satellite that prevented the attachment of an A-frame. The original plan had been to berth the uh, satellite in the cargo bay using the robot arm. Wait, 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 wait. I don't think it's lined up right. Hang on. You're listening to mission uh, specialist okay, now, now Joe Allen fine. and Dale Gardner as they prepare to end their spacewalk and uh, re-enter the airlock. Uh, not going. As we said, they have uh, now completed six hours in the spacewalk. Uh, I'm on my way now to... Okay. Because I can't move my left hand. Oh, okay. They could stay out there for another, more than another hour, perhaps even another two hours. Something, do you see anything wrong there? No? It's for an electrical to... It ought to go right on. Just to the left of the center place. of your screen is the secured Palapa satellite in the cargo bay. There. The round oh. cylindrical black object. Right.
Now we're looking from a camera that is looking down at the airlock. That's the entry back into the cabin area. And we don't know exactly where Gardner and uh, Allen are at this moment, but we do understand they're cleaning up the cargo bay in preparations for ending the spacewalk. There you go. So again, we're at the end of a Steve? successful six-hour spacewalk by the two crew members aboard the Discovery Shuttle.